You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is the case of Sam's versus Doris. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Good day. Ms. Sams, you're here today requesting that this court grant you a paternity test to prove that the defendant, Mr. Doris, the man who is on your birth certificate, is not your biological father. That's correct. Mr. Doris, you say that you are heartbroken that Ms. Sams claims you are not her father and say there is no need for a paternity test. You know you are her biological father and you've never been told differently. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. Now, the court must decide if there is sufficient evidence to order a paternity test in this case. Ms. Sams, why do you need the court to order this test? Well, Your Honor, in 2009, I believe, I went and had a family function with my um, mother's side of the family. I was speaking with my uncles, and my uncle said to me, how's your daddy doing since he got out of prison? So I said, what do you mean? My dad's never been in prison. And I said, who do you think my daddy is? And he said the other man's name. And I said, we were having some drinks. So I was just, you know, okay, well, I'm gonna see Mr. Doris tomorrow, so I'll talk to him about it. So we were sitting at my grandmother's house at the time, um, his mother, and I said to him, the other man's name, and I said, what is this that I hear about this other man? And he said, I never want to hear that name out of your mouth again. And it was ended just like that. And this was the first time ever in your life that you heard anything like this? Not exactly. When my sister and I were both pregnant at the exact same time, um, we were making comments back and forth to my mom because of blood work that had happened. Our lab work was done about the same time. And there were factors in one of our pregnancies that would typically only be if we had the same mother and father. So at that time, I said something to my mom about it. And my mom laughed about it. And she was like, well, you know, there was this time in my life and, you know, things were crazy and kind of laughing. But at that time, she still maintained that Mr. Doris was your biological father. Never really talked about it. Like, just kind of but dropped she it. But she, she, she knows that she would have told you. But she did, wasn't. She did, but right before she died, she said, I think that you need to have this done. So why would she say that? What Turned does she before? say to you exactly, Miss Sams? She said, well, if you have that feeling and we've had all this information, it, it, you need to be tested and you need to find out. And she Mr. said Doris, that because she just wanted you to be ensured that I am your dad. Mr. Doris, you've had no doubts all this time. You firmly believe you are Miss Sam's biological father. Yes, Your Honor, I do. I was at the hospital when she was born, her first breath. I got the uh, birth certificate. And I'd I like to see that. Jerome. Thank you. You're welcome. This is a certificate of birth for Diane Doris. And you're listed as father. You have pictures in your hand. What are these pictures of, Mr. Doris? Me and her, my little girl. Beautiful father-daughter pictures. That's a beautiful picture. However, I don't doubt any of that. I know that he was there when I was born. I'm aware that he's on my birth certificate. I have to know what is going on. I, for my sake, I need to know. No doubt in my mind. And you get very emotional when Miss Sams begins to talk about her doubt. Yes, Your Honor. I'm entitled to my feelings as well, and I'm entitled to the facts. And I need to know this. I need to know this. For me, I need to know. That's why I need your help. I need you to help me and do this test for me. It is so important. I just need to know. Mr. Doris, what was the nature of your relationship with Miss Sam's mother? Uh, I met her at a bar, and we just clicked right off the bat. I mean, we were together like three months and we ended up getting married. Really? Yes. She was not pregnant when I met her. Okay. She wasn't sleeping with no one else but me. Okay, so you met her, you had sex with her, and then three months later you got married. You know when you married my mom? 
I think it was October 77. No, you did not. You married my mom June of 1979 in Oklahoma. Well, I know we were married in Oklahoma. So you married her. So June we had sex nine... before then. Yeah, you just said three months before then. No. We had sex in 77. Three months later, I assume we got married. No, you Maybe got married it... in 79 in June of 19. She's saying you got married almost two years later. Yeah, I had I have the marriage certificate. I have their marriage certificate and We're... divorce decree from my mother's previous marriage to another man that she didn't divorce until April of 1979. This is why I have so many doubts. He just confirms it by, he doesn't remember things. Obviously, he doesn't even remember when he married her. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. I do not hear what you said about when you were married to my mom, and I'm telling you when you were married, but I am not incorrect about these dates. This is harbored in my heart for years now, and I know my dates about this stuff. I know when my children were conceived. I know when I was conceived approximately, and you're off by two years for crying out loud. Yeah, well, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, well, I ain't got the, my, the best memory in the world. What she's saying is because you're not clear on all of the facts, it only just increases her doubt that maybe your assertion that you're her biological father is not... It's not firm. It's not accurate. Well, she's telling but, me I'm the only one she slept with. But, well, <laughs> Miss... When we got but what, Miss Sam, right? I need you to understand that whether they were married or not, you they still could, could have conceived absolutely. you, of course. I absolutely understand And he's that. just presented your birth certificate, which means he was present when you were born. Your Honor, I honestly believe there was good reason for that. If there was a reason why my mother wanted him to be my father and didn't have the other man as my father, there was a very good reason for it. The other man in 1978, in October of 1978, and did not go to prison until, well, he did, went to jail and then he got bonded out. So for trial, for trial. And that would make sense why my mom would not want that man in my life. So after 33 years, you want to bring us up now? I've been bringing it up. You just don't listen. So I'm just putting all this out there like I'm trying to figure it out in my own head. Why they would do this to me. And it is confusing. It's the biggest confusing mess ever. My mom was married seven times and was single the last 10 years of her life. I have several siblings. It's just crazy to me. My whole life is just a crazy mess. And I need one thing answered for my children and for myself. I need this answered. It's only fair. And now, a couple of years ago, I was diagnosed with mixed connective tissue disease. And I need to know what side of the family I, I came from so that my cousins on my mom's side of the family could potentially know what if they need to be tested and keep up with the blood work and find out if they're carrying mixed connective tissue to disease and they have the ADA high levels like me and it, they took them, I was diagnosed 10 years later than I should have been. And my doctor has said, my rheumatologist has said, it is genetics or it's predominantly diagnosed in African-American women in childbearing age or in postmenstrual. Mr. Doris, does this particular disease run in your family? No, Your Honor. It does not? No. After my mom died, things got really, really, really interesting because I went to clean out her home and do what I needed to do. And um, I found a document that in 1980, my mother amended a birth certificate. Really? What? And... I have that proof right here. Jerome, I, may I see that proof, please? I don't know if it was because of a spelling error. I don't know why it would have been amended, but like, I, I have so many questions. I don't get it. So this is paperwork from the state of California indicating that there were additional certified copies of a newly amended birth certificate. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Doris, you were never told by her mother, informed, or received any notice about an amendment? No. 
Hearsay is saying that I'm not your dad. I I'm here telling you I am your dad. Did you not just see an amended document? I know you're... I was there when you were born. And I know she, that doesn't she, mean what she told me. She was not sleeping with anyone else. Your mom told him there was no one else. It's just all he knows. It's the information he has. I want to hear from your witness, though. Okay. Please stand, sir, and state your name. David Wayne Hooper. Mr. Hooper, you are Miss Sam's uncle, which would make you her mother's brother. Is yes, that correct? Yes, ma'am. What information do you have about this paternity mystery? You know, 77, 78, when my sister moved to my hometown, she was with another man at this time, um, the man that she had mentioned earlier. About a year or so went by and he was gone, okay? And um, at that time, my sister had conversation with my father, saying that she had been a little late. A little further down the line, Mr. Doris comes into the picture. They fell in love, they got married real quick. Um, and then right after the baby was born, they just disappeared. You believe your sister was already pregnant before she got into the relationship with Mr. Doris? Unfortunately, yes, ma'am. I truly believe she was. But you don't and know I, that for sure. No, and let's right. be... Not a, not a fact, no. No. Sir. Okay. No, sir. And is that during the time when she was with this other gentleman? You knew her to be with this other... This, this is right after he had gone to jail. The other man would have been in prison when I was born, okay? However... He was not incarcerated during the time that I would have been conceived. That's the only thing he and I can come up with because nobody's ever told me or told him or told our family why one day these people just pack up with my other siblings and myself, a new baby, and just take off to California in a car. We did that because your mom's mom was out there. She'd been she... out there the whole time. Right. And not let's be fact. clear, nobody wants this other man. Nobody, I'm not. No, oh. nobody uh, wants this other man to be my father. Let's be clear about oh, that. My word ain't good enough. No, it's not good enough because your dates aren't good enough. The documents prove otherwise. Your word is not good enough right now. And that's why you came here. Yeah. And in light of the testimony presented today, especially from Mr. Hooper, who indicated that he truly believed that she was pregnant at that time when she met Mr. Doris. Additionally, the paperwork you uncovered after her death and also the statement she made to you on her deathbed. This is all sufficient evidence. You are hereby ordered to go immediately, submit to a paternity test and return to this courtroom where I will read you the results. Are we clear? Thank you, Your, yes, Honor. Your Honor. Court is adjourned. I'm a basket of emotions. I am scared. I'm excited. I am nervous. I am terrified. I don't know. I won't be relieved until this is over. She kills me to just for her to tell me I'm not her dad. And when I, I know deep in my heart I am. We're back in session in the case of Sam's versus Doris. Both parties have submitted to the DNA testing that was ordered and I have the results for you. Before I get to those results, is there anything you'd like to say? Your Honor, I still believe she's my daughter. I have no reason why not to believe it. No reason, no doubt. Miss Sams, is there anything you'd like to say? I hope he is my father, but I just cannot get over the fact that my mother amended a birth certificate. And that's exactly why this courtroom exists, to bring clarity to situations like this so families know how to move forward. I have your results for you. Are you ready? As ready as yes, I'm gonna be. Jerome, the envelope. There you go, Judge. Thank you, sir. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Sam's versus Doris, when it comes to 36-year-old Diane Sam's, it has been determined by this court do you want to watch Paternity Court on TV? Go to paternitycourt.tv to find your local listings. Mr. Doris, you are not her father. <laughs> I'm so very sorry. <laughs> I told you, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. 
I'm so sorry. I knew. I'm so, so sorry. I know this was not the news you wanted. What, what are we going to do? Starts a whole new chapter over again. What, what are we there we do? go, Mr. Hooper. There we go. What? Family, the truth is a catalyst for a new years. beginning. 36 years. It can be if you allow it to be. It gives us clarity. You don't have to feel out of place anymore. Now you can choose your place. And that's different. Amen. The truth gives you power. Amen. Right? I, I, and as you look to Mr. Doris... I feel so... Blessed. And I have never seen this before. But when I went to read those results and I got that envelope, he held the picture of you and him up to his heart, facing forward. I have never seen... A father do that. He loves me. He loves you. I know he loves me. And in his mind, in his heart, you're his little girl. Like and look, you're holding his hand in this moment because you're there for him. <laughs> and he's been there for you. That's what's important. And so as you think about where you go from here, and you think about choosing your place now, don't forget Mr. Doris. I will ever, never. Yeah, All right? Never. Yes, Your Honor. We have counseling. We have resources for you. I wish you all the very best of luck. Thank Court you. is adjourned. <laughs>